If you have a Samsung refrigerator which has a lower ice maker in the freezer and the ice maker stopped working, in this video I'll show you what I did to diagnose that and fix it. The parts and steps used in this video refer to the Samsung refrigerator model shown in this image. First you want to check for error codes. To do this, disconnect the power for about 20 seconds and then reconnect it. Once the power is back on, check the water dispenser panel to see if there are any flashing error codes. If the display shows error 33E, then I'll take you through the steps I've taken in this video to fix that problem. Error 33E indicates that the filler tube heater has failed. To clear the error code, just simultaneously hold the energy saver button and the alarm buttons at the same time for about 8 seconds. As I said, if your ice makers are working, then this is the only step you will have to complete. But if your ice makers are not working, then continue watching this video. Prior to proceeding, you'll want to purchase the replacement part. I'll leave a link in the description below to show you the part that I ordered. The first step is going to be to turn off the water and to disconnect the power. After you've emptied all the contents from your freezer drawers, we're going to remove them. First step is to take the top drawer, push it all the way back, lift it up, and then pull it forward and out. The bottom drawer is removed in kind of reverse of the top. You're going to tilt up the very back end and then lift up and then remove it. Next we'll remove the drawer front from the railing. For this we'll need a 10 millimeter socket. There are two bolts on each side that you will need to remove. After the four bolts have been removed, you'll simply tilt the drawer front forward, lift it off, and set it aside. Let me share with you a lesson I learned the hard way here. You may have noticed that I pushed the rails back in just on the left side. The problem I encountered is when I pulled it back out to put things back together, the one side came out, the other side didn't, and it disconnected that metal rod. So to avoid this, I recommend always pushing or pulling on both rails at the same time. In the event you forget and do the same thing I did and, and cause the rod to become disconnected, you can fix it by pushing the tab that circled here and removing the rails. Then you simply just put the rod back in position as you slide the rails back into place. To remove the ice maker, first we're going to remove the two screws at the front of the ice maker. Then you gently pull the ice makers forward and let it drop down. Next you'll press the tab on the connector and then pull the connector apart. Then you'll depress the tab on the fill tube heater connector and pull it apart as well. Now at the back of the refrigerator locate the fill tube hose connector, pop off the protector collar. While depressing the locking collar pull the hose out of the connector. I recommend snapping the protector collar back in place just for safekeeping until you're ready to use it again. Next, you remove the hose clamp and the fill tube cover. Now you can pull out the old fill tube with the heater. I probably should have shown you a picture of what the fill tube looked like inside. It was solid ice on the inside. 
That's why the ice maker wasn't working. Here you can see the new unit at the bottom compared to the old unit. When I ordered the new part, it noted that the part was redesigned and this deflector tip on the end was no longer there and it will function properly without it. Now you can slide the new tube into position. Note there are two slots, one on each side to line it up when you do push it into position. Try to make sure that you push it snugly back into place. When reinstalling the cover, do note that there is a slot on the bottom for the hose. When reinstalling screws, I prefer using a manual screwdriver over a drill because the drill can sometimes strip it if it's set too hard. Now you can reconnect the hose by removing the protecting sleeve. Remember to put the protecting sleeve over the hose first, then firmly slide the hose all the way into position on the connector. and then reattach the protecting sleeves. Now that the new fill tube is in position, we can reconnect the electrical connector by just snapping it into place. Next you'll plug in the ice maker. Then align the ice maker into the slots and push it back to snap it into place. Replace the two front screws and you're done installing the new fill tube and ice maker. While reattaching the door to the rails, note that there are two tabs, one on each side, that fit inside of a slot on the each rail. Reattach all four bolts, two on each side. First you'll replace the bottom tray, tilt the front edge down, and slide it into position. You may want to press down and wiggle it down a little bit to make sure it's snapped into place. Next you'll set the top tray in place, push it all the way back, pull it forward, making sure that the wheels dropped below that track to hold it in place. Now that everything is reassembled, you can turn the water back on. And now for the moment of truth, I'm going to plug the fridge back in and we should see that there is no longer an Air 33E. If the display shows that the refrigerator is turned off, just simply hold the energy saver keys and the freezer keys at the same time for 5 seconds and it will turn the fridge back on. I'm happy to report that once the refrigerator cooled down, the ice maker did indeed start working again. This video has been a DIY Saver production. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, please hit the subscribe button.